Hey, it's Seraphin, and today with only four ingredients, we're making this super yummy mini pizza bread dough. I wanna make it clear that this isn't a regular pizza, it's definitely more of a pizza-inspired bread, really popular in Asia, and it's soft, pretty fluffy, and generously topped. In our video on pizza, we discussed a lot about the science of using Changsheng on pizza and the benefits of poolish in bread making. Everything from those videos still applies to this one, so we're not going to go in depth about them again, and I'm just going to quickly introduce you to what kind of dough this is. First thing you need to know, it's a pretty high hydration dough, sitting at a nice 76% hydration, certainly not the highest, but not low either. It is a wet dough that can get sticky if you don't treat it properly. Partially because of this, we're not kneading the dough traditionally, we're building gluten through slap and folds. Second of all, this is a so-called lean dough recipe. The only ingredients are flour, water, salt, and yeast. So these are also the only ingredients contributing to the flavor. To get any decent flavor out of the flour, we need long fermentation, which is exactly what we're doing in this recipe with the poolish, and the use of tangchong will also make it sweeter. Third, to bake a proper pizza, you need a very hot oven. Many professional places have a wood fire oven, reaching temperatures home ovens cannot. That's not too much of an issue here because we're simply aiming for a crisp crust and the tangchong will help the pizza retain moisture. Okay, with those three points out of the way, let's get to making the dough. So to start with, we make our poolish. In a bowl, we add 50 grams of water in first, then an eighth of a teaspoon of instant yeast. Oops, we dropped a little bit. And finally, 50 grams of bread flour. We mix well with our chopsticks, the superior tool for making poolish, I'm telling you, super fast and convenient. Then we cover the bowl and set it aside to ferment. And while you could leave it out at room temperature to fully ferment, we're putting it in the fridge overnight after leaving it out for about an hour to develop more flavor. Right, next we mix together the tangchong. For this recipe's tangchong, we use 90 grams of boiling hot water straight into a glass bowl. Then we toss in 60 grams of flour. Mixing it all together right away with a wooden rolling pin. The ratio isn't quite a one to two flour to water ratio, but it's more than one to one, so it's still quite easy to mix and work with. Just make sure to be careful with the heat and mix quickly. When it's all combined, we cover the bowl and let it cool until room temperature. This can be used right away, but for the best results, we let it rest in the fridge. When those two derivative ingredients are done, we're ready to make the final dough. We have our mise en place step already done, and now let's just add these ingredients into the bowl. Starting with the poolish first, just get that right in. It's quite stretchy, a little sticky, so we'll just scrape the bowl. Right after we add the tangchong, scooping it up and dropping it all in. It's a little cold, so it's quite stiff. Then we add the liquid. Only 50 grams of water here. A lot of the water has been incorporated into the tangchong and poolish. Next, five grams of salt, shaking it in. A fourth of a teaspoon of instant yeast, or about 1.2 grams. Finally, 140 grams of bread flour. With all ingredients in, we're going to give that a good mix with the spatula, really working in the flour. It may take quite some effort at first because the tangchong and poolish are stiff. The flour needs to be really pressed and folded in. It's perfectly fine, just keep going. We just want to get the dough to a still rough but more combined appearance. This is good enough, so we're going to turn the dough out onto our work surface and start doing slap and folds on it. 
It's a very simple gluten building technique. We just scoop the dough up by the middle and slap it down like this before folding it over again. Here I'll do it slowly a few more times. And then this is what it looks like when at full speed. Every other slap and fold, we turn the dough a bit just to make sure all sides are evenly covered, just rotating it. It'll come naturally once you get used to the motions. We keep going from here for around five to six minutes until the dough has almost reached full gluten development. When it looks like this, smoother and capable of forming this taut skin on the surface, then we're done here. We want to check this quickly with a window pane test. It should be able to stretch out thinly enough to see light through it, as long as you spread it out gently. If your dough can't do this, then you might need to do a few more minutes of slap and folds, a few more rounds. And then we're going to round the dough somewhat, getting it a bit neater. Taking a bowl, we'll line it with a bit of oil, just enough to coat the sides and our hands. Then scooping up the dough with the scraper, we drop it in the bowl, tidying up a little bit. We cover it and let this bulk ferment until it roughly doubles in size. After that, we'll move right along to dividing and pre-shaping. Opening the cover, we'll sprinkle the work surface and the dough with flour, being a bit generous because the dough is quite sticky. Following that, we scoop out the dough, flipping it over onto the work surface. We'll roughly shape it into a round pool, really just to make it easier to handle. We'll then weigh the whole thing first, before taking it off the scale and dividing it immediately into six. Right away, first we split it into two, then each of those pieces into three, just moving quick and fast. and then using the scale to make sure that they're all of roughly the same weight. We cut off a little bit from the heavier dough pieces, move it to the lighter ones. With that, we'll pre-shape them all into little round dough balls. Just tucking in all the edges, pulling them into the center, and then rolling the dough in the palm of our hands, dusting with flour as necessary to prevent sticking. The important thing is to make sure not too much flour gets folded into the dough, trying our best to make sure it stays on the outside of the dough balls. Okay, we've got them all done, so we want to cover this and let it rise for a second time. This is longer than a usual bench dress because we really want them a little more extensible for the shaping process. This will also help them build a little more strength and flavor. When it's done, we shape them into cute little mini pizzas. Taking a piece and practically drowning it in flour and semolina for flavor, we're gonna spread it out like this at first, just pressing it out with our fingers, making little dimple marks. Then we stretch it further like this. We're not going too far with this step because it's really more of a pizza bread and we want them to stay mini pizzas. So just until they get to about 12 centimeters across, then we're good, and we'll put this finished one on a baking tray lined with parchment paper. Repeat for the rest of the dough balls. They should be extensible after that long rest, and if you feel any sticking, feel free to dust them with flour. When shaping pizzas, we're not afraid to use flour, mainly because one, it's pretty high hydration, normally, and two, the way you shape a pizza at the final step doesn't require any tucking in or folding, just stretching out, so the flour remains on the surface of the dough. 
Therefore, you don't need to worry about using too much flour. When they're all done, we're gonna proof the dough for about 30 minutes. If this were an actual pizza, it would be topped and go in immediately, but this is a pizza bread, so to make it a little softer and fluffier, we proof it. We'll also take the time to preheat our oven to the hottest setting, get a really nice crisp crust, and also help get some browning. When the dough's done proofing, we can get to the really fun part, toppings. This part is naturally entirely up to you. We're using a very standard but absolutely delicious homemade tomato sauce with cheese and slices of pepperoni on top. Tomato sauce first, then cheese, and finally the meat. When they're all topped, they go into the oven to bake for 12 to 14 minutes at 250 degrees Celsius or your oven's highest setting at top and bottom heat until the color turns a deep golden brown. Then we're done. The outer crust is thin and crispy and the inside is soft and fluffy. It's definitely not a standard pizza, but this mini pizza bread is so good, so yummy, and so easy to make. I'm going for seconds right away. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and bye!